Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the White Spark Weekly. Today I have a special guest, uh, Joy Hawkins, with me today. Uh, I wanted to talk about these local pack ads. So you've seen them before, Dr. Pete just did a really great study on the Moz blog where he identified that like 35% of queries are returning these local pack ads. So this is growing in prominence and it's actually a really interesting strategy because if you can't rank outside of your radius, you could use local pack ads to really cover the whole city a lot better. So the, the questions are how you get these local pack ads. Um, you know, what are all the different details of them? I'm not very good at PPC, so I just know the basics of it. Uh, Joy Hawkins, who uh, has uh, agreed to join me today, she knows PPC very well. So if, uh, if you need some help with that, you should check out her company, Sterling Sky, uh, get in touch with them. But uh, so I've got a bunch of questions lined up trying to figure out how these local pack ads work, how you do them. And so uh, we'll just get right into it. Joy, do you want to just say a few words? Tell, tell about your company. What do you do? Um, so I'm Canadian like Darren. So we're super friendly people up here. <laughs> um, but yeah, when I'm, uh, when I'm not uh, working for my agency, I'm probably working on um, updating my local SEO training that I write with um, local U. And uh, yeah, it's just been been a good uh, good year so far. <laughs> okay, so uh, my first question is, I understand that to get these pack ads, uh, you've got to link your Google My Business account to your AdWords account. Can you just kind of walk us through the process? How do you how do you get these local pack ads? Yeah, so it's actually really easy. You just need to set up a location extension. Um, I found the simplest way to do it is on the campaign level, because um, sometimes people get really granular and they said, said set certain things up on like ad group levels and then you forget, um, you know, which um, ads you've, you know, hooked up. Um, so putting it on the campaign level is definitely the, um, the best way to go. And then when you link it, um, I know one of the issues we have um, is we've got, you know, one account with Google My Business that's got like 15 um, businesses in it. And I don't want to link them all. I just want to link the specific one for this campaign. Right. So if you're like me and you're an agency, you can actually label the listings in Google My Business. So I could put like a white spark label on your listing there, Darren. And then when I'm um, connecting the two, you can specifically say you just want to import the one with the white spark label. Um, it's actually a field in Google My Business under the advanced information. Um, there's like these three fields. Um, can't get to it in AdWords, but it's in the Google My Business dashboard and there is like a label field there. So I find the label field is really great for um, keeping it organized and only importing the the one location that you actually want with this campaign. Yeah, that's interesting. I noticed, I, so I played around with this and I tried to set one up. Uh, so I added this location extension and when I was messing around with this, it um, it did ask me like, what, what did I want to add here? So I go plus, right? And I can go location extension and then I can uh, sync it to a specific, um, a specific business. Sorry, yeah. not very good at AdWords here, but uh, <laughs> all single yeah. locations, one location selected. So yeah, this is basically so, how you set it the up. The only reason why I don't like doing the business name, because that's another thing you can say like, oh, I want, you know, to import the ones with business name and it's White Spark. I don't know, business names can change. So I usually just prefer to use a label because it's just easier. Yeah, right something here. Minor changes. But yeah, there's the label field. So I usually put like label equals white spark and then I pick something really small to label the client. Right. Find it Makes sense. Easier. Yeah. Uh, so let me get in here. Yeah. So anyways, I made a little ad to sort of figure out how this would work, but I can't get my ad to show. So <laughs> tell me about that. So I yeah. basically targeted these keywords. I'm trying to get my silly ad to show, but uh, as you can see, no impression so far. How, how, what's the deal? How come I can't get my ad to show? <laughs> Well, Darren, you're bidding five cents, so that's probably the first problem. <laughs> that's the $5, I thought. I said, like, my... Oh, <laughs> sorry, you know what? The screen's small. I think it says 95 cents. Maybe that's a nine, but... five <laughs> here. Auto. 85. Yeah. yeah. I, I can so, <laughs> <laughs> you definitely would have to bid higher. Um, you know, I'm, I don't know what the average cost per click is for the keywords you're bidding on, but I, I think it's pretty rare if you see something that's lower than a dollar these days. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, it's on auto, so I don't know. I was, just yeah. trusting, I was trusting AdWords to sort that out for me, but I guess not. I have to bid higher. I generally don't trust Google to manage things. I don't know. That's my, my take on it. But um, so essentially, you got to get your ad to show. So why your ad's not showing probably has nothing to do with how you set this up. It's probably to do with the account itself. 
Um, so if you've got an AdWords account and you've already got keywords um, set up and ranking really well, and like you're in the top three, um, you stand a good shot of, of um, having the three pack ads show as long as you've got the location extension hooked up. Um, the key is that they show up based on the user's location. So it has nothing to do with the keywords you're targeting. Yeah. It has to do with where the user's located. So like when I was kind of messing around um, this morning, I was using the mobile Moxie tool right. and like changing my location and doing a bunch of mobile searches. And when I first put in Edmonton as my location, I didn't see any three pack ads. But the moment I changed it to a postal code, which is a code in the States, um, I was able to see an ad for some um, SEO company in Edmonton. Um, so they're very hyper local and they are really based on the user and their location. Right. Yeah, let me demo that because I noticed that same thing. So if I just do a search for, you know, plumbers and then so on desktop, we don't typically get them. Why don't we address that first? How come these local pack ads, uh, we see them on mobile. So if you if you open up your phone and do some search, you're definitely going to see pack ads for things like plumbers or storage or insurance. But when I do it on my uh, my desktop, I don't really get them. What's the deal with that? So they definitely show up a lot less on the desktop. Um, one of the big things that I've noticed um, for the ones that I've seen for clients that show up on computers is usually it only shows for keywords that are related to your business name. So um, for example, um, in this case, like the bankers and traders one there, they probably would never show right now on computers because they don't have the word insurance in their business name. So they wouldn't show um, for like, a keyword related to insurance, but they might show for like, if you know they were looking for bank keywords, right. because the word bankers is a part of their business name. So you're not suggesting um, that people keyword spam their business name, are you? No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> we have had some rebranding cases though, like a lot of businesses are, you know, trying to do it legit and like yeah. actually rebranding their business. And we did that with a um, European garage because, sorry, European auto repair, they were like, uh, their business name was just something garage. And it doesn't even specify that they only work on European cars. So we were kind of rebranding everything for them and including European auto repair in their business title. And that's the keyword that they have three pack ads for on both mobile and desktop. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, if, if you're doing a rebrand, then you should certainly look at getting some keywords in your business name. So <laughs> I, I wanted to show like these ads change depending on where I am on the map. So as I zoom around, you'll see the ads. So there's no ads here. But as I kind of move around, I'll get different ads popping up. Oh. Yeah, and just to confuse you, these ads don't always match what you see on three pack ads too. Um, so right. they're they're both taken from the same thing, which is location extensions. So if you have a, an ad here, you're el eligible to have an ad in the three pack. Um, but like the the ones that you see are going to vary based based on your location and where things you're searching for. So as you kind of zoom in areas, you'll see ads for. Um, businesses in that area right and then I noticed that these ads show up in the Google Maps app as well so like ha is there a way to say okay I want my ads to either only only be in the local pack or only be in maps or only be in the local finder no there's no actually it's funny because the AdWords help center like doesn't even really address these types of ads at all um, but no there's no way to distinguish it right now I'd be kind of cool if you could but um, I guess Google assumes that you know if it works one place it's probably gonna work all of them yeah and then so these ads are basically just the same as a regular AdWords ad so you specify a campaign an ad group you create an ad and you just add lo location extensions and you hope Google shows it it's it's pretty much that right yeah they're really based on keywords so you definitely have to have the keywords in your account but um, right. the one thing that I found is like let's say you're in <clears throat> Minneapolis and your business is in Minneapolis um, you could actually show up for like auto insurance Minneapolis or auto insurance St. Paul. Like, doesn't matter if the the search term actually has St. Paul in it. If the person searching is close to you in Minneapolis, they'll still see your ad. Um, right. So that's kind of a feature I think a lot of business owners love because as long as a you know searcher is close to you, they can put in a different city and you'd still appear, which is kind right. of cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so but yeah, they they're different too because they don't use ad text. They use the business name as it is in Google My Business. Right. So you cannot customize how it looks, which is kind of irritating. Yeah. Um, they also don't seem to really uh, factor in quality score much. Like quality score has a lot to do with the ad itself. 
So we've seen cases where like people with terrible quality scores, like, you know, fours, fives, still technically have um, the three pack ads showing, um, even though, you know, by AdWords terms, they, they shouldn't. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So they're, it, these are not impacted by quality score. They're more impacted by location and keywords. Yeah, I think Google's like treating them kind of separately and, and really basing it on the location. And then obviously the, the business name, they look at that. They look at, um, I, I don't think they look at categories. I, at least I haven't found any evidence to suggest that they do. Um, so it's kind of a really simple um, setup. I feel like they should probably make it a little easier to customize. Yeah, that's true, actually. I noticed a really interesting thing is when I searched on my phone for car insurance, uh, and I got an ad for a mortgage broker. So mm. that tells me that that mortgage broker's campaign is too broad. Like the keywords yeah. that they're targeting are too broad. And so they're coming up mm -hmm. in local pack ads for terms that aren't really relevant to what they do. Yeah, which is a very common AdWords problem. <laughs> right. That's right. Yes, yeah, because I, I imagine that the dream would be that you could just go into AdWords, make a new ad and say, this is the area that I want my ad to show in. You can maybe maybe even specify zip uh, zip codes or postal codes and and target specific keywords, but it just doesn't work that way. It's pretty clunky. All you really can do is you make a regular ad, add the extension, and then the area is basically set at the campaign level, right? So if I go into my campaign uh, tests here, let's go into here. Where are my uh, campaign settings? There, there's a settings tab there on the left. Um, oh, there we go, under location. So the one thing that, um, just to clarify, so you can't really influence where these show up because Google only shows them based on the location of the searcher, not right. what you're putting in here. Right. And I don't know how much, um, how big of a radius they show them for. Um, I didn't test to see how far away um, I have to get before it stops showing, but they have to be close to you. So I would venture to stay probably within like five to 10 miles uh, I think that is probably way too high, but you know, within a five mile radius, you're most likely going to show regardless of, you know, if the person typed in Edmonton or not. Um, but you would not show up to someone in St. Albert uh, because someone searching there is, is not going to see you. They're going to see someone closer if someone else has um, location extensions enabled. Really? Yeah. This guy close to me here, you store it. So, and again, Google might be considering your location because you're zoomed in. So they might be yeah. using that kind of as a factor. Um, and this was specifically for the ads in the three packs, so not the local finder. The local finder ads work slightly differently. Um, but for like ads in the three pack, um, we found it, it really varied based on the searcher's location. Um, and I remember when we were testing it out, we were using St. Paul or Minneapolis as an area to test it in because there's so many cities within like a really small area. Right. Um, and then the further we got away, um, the less the ad started showing until it didn't show at all. Um, I just don't know exactly what mile radius that is, but I know you can't um, influence it. It had nothing to do with the location settings that we put in the AdWords account. Right. Well, that's interesting. In this local finder uh, results here, I live right in this area here but these are my two ads and it's funny how they're clustered together. See how storage mart and action moving are uh, up here. Mm -hmm. so that's interesting. Those two are there. And so let's zoom in, see if I get different ads. And it might be, it might vary too as well based on the industry because I know I have a client in lawn care who is 45 to 45 minutes ish um, from my house. And I've been able to trigger his ad um, on my computer before. Right. So I think in his case, it's more of a, the fact that there's like no one else. <laughs> right. um, so that's, I think something else that could be factored in, whereas that probably wasn't true with the insurance example we were looking at. Yeah. And it might, it's going to vary on desktop versus mobile too. So it's pretty hard to test that and sort of show you. All yeah. right, so I, got, I got a bunch of other questions here. Um, do you typically put your local extension ad? So if you're doing, if you want to do local extensions, will you make a new campaign for that? Or will you just add it to your other campaigns? No, definitely just add it to your existing campaign. Just add it to your existing campaigns. Um, and what's the reason there? Just so you can take the benefit of the quality score and, and the information you've kind of built up in that campaign. Yeah. And then you've got all the same keywords, right? I mean, the keywords you'd normally want your regular ads to show for would be the same keywords you'd want three pack ads for. So it, it rarely is different. Right. Uh, can you know if you can do this through AdWords Express or do you have to have the proper full AdWords? I'm pretty sure you can. 
Um, that being said, I've never tested one because I hate AdWords Express. <laughs> yeah. um, but I haven't heard anything to uh, make me think that it's it's not possible. Okay. Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, can this work if you are a service area business? Can you still get these to appear if your address is hidden and you're a service area business? Yep, yep. they work the same way. The only difference would be obviously that um, the directions icon won't be there. Um, oh. Okay, obviously, but, but you yeah. definitely can still get them because so, I think that's really valuable. I think particular service area businesses, you know, they want to target a much wider radius. Um, now that's interesting what you said earlier. So let's say my business is in is in St. Albert, which is a suburb of Edmonton, and I want to get my ads showing in Edmonton. Are you saying I can't do that? I can't get local pack ads showing in Edmonton? You can if um, the user is that searching is like close to you in, in St. Albert. Right. So like they could be typing in like Plumber Edmonton, but like it's all based on how close they are to your business. So and then I think also how, how many other, you know, possible ads Google has, like, you know, they look at all these different things. Right. So local pack ads are not a solution to the proximity problem. That just trying to break your proximity in the local stuff. You, yeah. They don't, they don't solve that really. What What is cool about them for people that are in the suburbs, though, is that like if you know people are in St. Albert, they might still search Edmonton because they think there's more businesses there. Right. So in that case, you would be able to reach that person by typing in Plumber Edmonton. You know, in the in the three pack, you're never going to show up, um, but you can actually have a um, an ad there. So that that part has been really cool. Right. Um, is there any extra pricing? Like, do you pay more because you got the location extension, or it's just part of your regular AdWords campaign? It's part of the AdWords campaign. However, we've, just found, we've seen that pretty much every single case I've ever looked at, the clicks are cheaper. I don't know why. It makes no sense. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Mike Blumenthal asked a question on Twitter, which I think is really interesting. So, given there's just one space, you know, uh, on mobile. How does Google run that auction, or uh, you know, who do they just? How do they decide who gets to show? Uh, do they rotate? You know, is it basically based on bidding? Like, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's a mixture of all of it. Um, I think bidding definitely plays a role. Um, you know, like in your case, if you're not bidding more than a dollar, you're probably not going to show anywhere. Right. Um, but as far as like the the ad that they show, the, the definite number one thing would be how close they are to me like if I'm searching on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's huge. And then also like your business name, if it's, you know, relevant to what I'm typing in, um, that kind of plays a role. Right. Um, but as far as how they choose which one, it's, it's kind of similar to like AdWords, you know, it's based on a, a bunch of different factors and it, how relevant Google thinks the ad is and the click through rate and things like that. Um, so typical AdWords stuff. Typical AdWords stuff, basically the more you're willing to pay, the more likely you are to show. <laughs> Yes, as long as people are clicking. I, I definitely think click through rate is one of those things you can't really force. Right. So um, no one cares about it. Like if you have bad reviews, for example, and you started advertising and your Google reviews do show up with your ad, um, there is a case where I can see the click through rate being crappy and then right. your ad would probably essentially not show as much. That's a good point. So that actually affects your quality score because if you got really bad reviews, you get lots of impressions, no clicks, your quality mm -hmm. score is going to go down. And then the same thing, it can actually be beneficial to have the keyword in your business name because then you're just kind of, oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for. You're going to be more likely to get the clicks, right? So yeah, if we, I, if we renamed uh, White Spark, you know, Edmonton <laughs> SEO company, then uh, we, we might get more clicks on our ads. Yeah, but, should really but, rethink that. But we're not going to do that. Um, all right. Are there any uh, other specific things that you think people should know about these local pack ads? Any questions I didn't ask? Um, no. As far as tracking them, so just keep in mind that um, you know all the activity on them will never show up in Google Analytics, which is a bit of a bummer. But mm. when you click on an ad, it doesn't actually take you to the website. It takes you to um, the knowledge panel for the business. Right. Exactly. You're going to be able to um, do that there, but you can um, when you see an ad in the three pack, that's what happens. So yeah. it's kind of like those pack listings for um, what we call them, like the image ones that have the image on it. Um, yep. I know what you mean. And it, yeah. So it works the same way. It takes you to the knowledge panel for the business. And then um, they have nothing to do with call extensions. So if there's a call button on it, it is not pulling in from your call extension. So um, it's a bit tricky on how to track them. But basically what we do is we add a tracking phone number um, in Google My Business in the location extension field, which is another one of those advanced fields that I was mentioning in Google right. My Business. 
Yep. Um, and then we can literally track all the calls that happen because of the location extension, um, which includes three pack ads. So that's how we do it. And I found like, I mean, the numbers are pretty phenomenal, um, yeah. but it definitely it does not use your call extension phone number. So um, it won't show up there. It won't show up under call details or anywhere in AdWords. Um, it won't show up as, you also can't track conversions on it because again, it doesn't use um, Google Analytics. So uh, it's kind of challenging from an AdWords perspective, but um, there are ways to do it if you're using call tracking, just use a call tracking number on the location extension. Sure, and if they don't call, if they just, uh, what about like clicks to driving directions and stuff, you can't really track that? Or you just yeah, you can segment it. And um, so if you segment by click type, they're called get location details. Okay. That's the dumbest name ever, but that's what Google calls them. Okay, so you can get that data out of AdWords. Yes, it just won't tell you, like, get location details means that they clicked on, you're not going to see it in your account because you don't have any um, data yet for clicks. But if you go to the campaigns tab, um, or I guess in your case, you could uh, just click on the campaign name on the left-hand side there. Um, and then go to, like, go to the, there you go. Um, oh, there, there you have it. If you go to, sorry, I'm like your screen small here. Um, so you can segment um, by click. So you can do that like either in keywords or um, under the ad groups level. But uh, yeah, if you click there, I think there should be an option to segment, um, which is one of these things here. So it is, you know, um, I think the, it's, it's one of those lines. Slides. <laughs> on the right hand side next to the filter button. The right hand side next to the filter button. Oh yeah, this yeah, one, one of those slides is segment. There you go, that one. Yeah, and then you can go clip type, click type. And then there would be a line there. You don't have any data, but there would be a line there that would basically say like headline, site link, uh, mobile clicks to call, which yeah. are call extension um, data. So nothing would show there. But then there's another one called get location details. Um, and it'll show you how many clicks you got, which those are people that clicked on the listing to expand your knowledge panel, essentially. Right. Um, well, that's cool. So you, get, you can get that data out of AdWords. Some data. It's just it's hard to do anything with it. That's why I like the call tracking option. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to say, I'm pretty disappointed that this does not, <laughs> does not really break the proximity problem where, you know, you're mostly just going to rank within your, your area around your business. Uh, I think you mm -hmm. probably can expand your radius a little bit with uh, the ads. Google's going to show you. Yeah show you a little bit wider, but it doesn't mean that a service area business can target all the different cities and all the different areas, uh, which is uh, too bad. I guess you gotta go back to the organic results and, and uh, organic ads as well. Yeah, I mean, but keep in mind, I've seen really good success from suburbs. So that's, if you're in that boat, it is, I think, still helpful, much better than like before. Yeah. Um, if people search the main city, then you do show up. Absolutely. And I think, you know, that's the point. You want to drive more traffic from search and more calls, more leads, more business from search. These ads are another way to do that. And as you mentioned, yeah. they seem to be a little bit cheaper than regular ads. So uh, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. Uh, mm -hmm. It's useful to set it up and turn these on. And as long as you can uh, validate the return on investment and I, it doesn't cost that much since it's such a, a small locale, um, I think there's uh, good advantages to be to setting these up. Absolutely. No reason not to. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Joy. I appreciate uh, having you on the show. And uh, I guess that's it. All right. Thanks for having me. Okay. Yeah. So if anyone needs uh, AdWords help, I really uh, recommend Joy. She's awesome. That's why I asked her to come on. So you can check oh, out the company Sterling Sky. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have yourself right. uh, a good weekend. Bye-bye.